So, I was at this funeral. It was actually the funeral of a friend of mine, Jane, teacher, died of cancer, really young, too early. And the eulogy was incredible. They were saying all these wonderful things that we didn't really know about all the good that she'd done. And I thought to myself, man, when I go, nobody but nobody is going to say that about me. And I was kind of disappointed, especially in myself. That same week, I was at yet another music industry charity dinner. They're like going to a wedding, but the band happens to be Bruce Springsteen or Stevie Wonder. This one was for the T.J. Martell Foundation, which was started when T.J., age 19, died of leukemia. I was listening intensely to this doctor, and at the end of his speech, he said, I was in the next bed to T.J. 30 years ago with leukemia, and I, I promised myself that if I lived, that I would dedicate my life to research. And I thought, man, I'm not coming to one of these dinners again, just giving my money and doing, doing, doing nothing. No way. No way. But where to start? That's the problem. For me, it's so difficult to know where to start. And I don't know about any of you guys who have thought, well, I want to try and do something, but I don't know where to start. Maybe raise your hands. Let me have a look at you out there, basically. There's a few of you, quite a few of you, actually. So I wanted to share a little bit of my kind of things that have helped me along the way um, that may be useful to you. So the first one I want to talk about is basically bringing your own game. So I love music. I always loved it since I was a kid. I DJed my way through high school, through university, through law school. And fortunately, I quit the law the day I qualified and spent my career in the music business, working with diverse acts from A Tribe Called Quest to Britney Spears. Basically. <laughs> So, I think we all can bring our own experiences to bear. I am totally impractical. I can't really knock a nail in a wall. So, for me to go and build a house for Habitat for Humanity it would be just, it would fall down in a week, for sure. <laughs> but because I have my business skills, my music skills, and of course my network, I'm now working with Habitat on President and Mrs. Carter's 30th anniversary tour of the Carter Work Project to really raise profile, and we do that by bringing musicians and actors and icons. So I think the first thing is we all have our own unique experiences, um, and we should really bring them to bear. Um, but I think you need to get started. So many people, including myself, say, man, I really got to do something about charity. I've got to get involved. And they're saying this, the same, same thing six months later. So for me, I had this brilliant idea. I basically decided I was going to produce this album. It was called Between the Covers. And it was, uh, it was cover versions by Alicia, U2, Madonna. There was a, actually a TV show on VH1 hosted by Kevin Bacon and Michael Bacon, the Bacon brothers. We did this amazing marketing campaign, all the proceeds to TJ Martell, and guess what? It came out and it bombed. It was really terrible, actually. But we made it up to them. We made it up to them. But at least I was off and running. And, and, and that leads me, I think, to my third, uh, third uh, point here, which is talking about persistence, although don't necessarily give up your day job. So I still do music. I advise movie companies on the music that goes in their movies, such as the Twilight franchise, and that enables me to pay the rent and to start my company, which is called Commit Media. It's a cause entertainment agency. And what we do is we act for the good guys, the NGOs, the foundations, the nonprofits, and also celebrities and companies who want to do good. And we do that simply by wrapping up serious subjects in very entertaining packages. And that may sound glitzy, but it's not. We're really all about the impact. Um, I, let me give you an example. So March of Dimes has a wonderful campaign that it does called World Prematurity Day. And the idea is to show the seriousness of different uh, kind of premature birth, basically, which accounts for about a million deaths for babies a year. And we reached out to Celine Dion, um, whose twins were actually born premature, who donated not just the services, but the production costs of this fantastic PSA, which has garnered millions of dollars in earned media and social media, but most importantly, has allowed March of Dimes through their campaign to help lower premature birth rates in the US and to get much needed resources allocated in countries like Afghanistan and Pakistan. So. What's good with us is, as a, as a new venture in this cause entertainment world, we've had to educate people about who we are, what we do, and why they should use us. And despite the recession, persistence has allowed us to survive and to grow. But 
I don't want to just talk about what we do. I've got some fantastic examples of other people I want to share with you that are, that are truly inspiring. But first, I've got this really kind of serious question, because I think we're a serious audience, which is, who knows what Bill Gates and Psy of Gangnam Style fame have in common? Nobody. All right, so let me share it with you. They're both Rotary Polio ambassadors. And I want to talk about Rotary. Rotary and its 1.2 million members who have been tirelessly since the mid-80s fighting to eradicate polio. They're a great organization. Their motto is service above self, and they live it. I just love this organization. They're fantastic. And when they got involved, there were 350,000 kids a year that were either getting crippled or dying of polio. When we got involved, which was only three years ago, it was down to less than 1% in the world. 1,600 cases. Pretty cool, huh? And we work with them and the fantastic marketing team on a campaign called We're This Close. We're This Close to Ending Polio. Um, and we reached out to different celebrities around the world who had a direct connection with, with, with the cause. Um, and the idea being to really enthuse membership to continue, to raise funds, and of course to eradicate polio. And I want to share with you a little clip, a short clip, about one of our ambassadors, Archie Punjabi, who basically has been at the forefront of this fight. So. And the Emmy goes to Archie Punjabi. I think the character, you know, everybody's talking about her and, and people are intrigued with us. I think when Rotary asked me would I want to be an ambassador for polio, I think it's a good way to you know, make them aware of, of something a little bit more serious. As a child, I lived in India. I used to witness children suffering from polio. She's tough, actress Archie Punjabi. And I think the industry that I'm in, as wonderful as it is, it's quite a crazy business. It's two drops and it could save life. How are we doing Central Park? If I take something on, I want to be fully committed to it and really do my best. Hi, I'm Archie Punjabi. We are this close to ending polio. This close to making sure no child... And the end polio campaign is a perfect way. We are this close. We are this close. This close. I love the idea that they've got a whole selection of people. Or this close. We are this close. This close. Be a part of history. It's really nice to be able to do something else. To see how people are really suffering. It brought everything into focus. So once you've seen that, what you're doing is very You know, this is a journey that I feel I'm on with Rotary, and I want to see it um, to the end. OK. So that's an example of one, what one person can do. And I think we should bring that person on stage now to say thank you. So let me introduce you to Archie. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So proud of being part of Rotary and the fight for polio. It's incredible to think that in 1980 there were over 350,000 cases of polio, and today there's only 230. And India, a country that people thought would never eradicate the disease, um, it's now in its third year of being polio free. So I would encourage you all to look out for World Polio Day on October the 24th. And Paul, thank you so much for all of your support. You really yeah. are an unsung hero of our society. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Archie. Now, the other thing I just want to mention is that they, Rotary and his partners, UNICEF and the Gates Foundation, are very hopeful by the end of 2014 there will be no polio cases in the world, which is a very cool thing for a lot of people. So, now Rotary do other stuff. They do deal with women and girls' issues, which we heard earlier today. And I want to talk about Catapult, which is the coolest, coolest uh, organization founded by a songwriter called Maz Kessler. Catapult is the first crowdfunding platform that's dedicated to girls and women's rights. And the reason it was founded because there's one serious problem Maz wanted to address, which is basically only 6% of all funding goes, goes to women and girls' issues. 6%, that ain't a lot, basically. And what it does, it basically joins um, global citizens around the world to organizations that are on the front line of dealing with women's and girls' issues. It does this by having qualified nonprofits, can put up all different projects, and then you, we, all of us, the public, can then donate to them. We can track their progress in real time and see how much 
um, impact they're all having um, through, 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 through this kind of crowdfunding system, basically. Now, an example of that would be, I know, mobile phones teaching girls to read in Afghanistan for those that are not allowed to leave the home. I mean, there's other really cool stuff on there, so we should check it out. And we got involved when Catapult um, partnered up with the Gucci Foundation for the Chime for Change um, campaign, also on women and girls' empowerment through um, education, health, and justice. It was the the, the, the kick-starting kind of event was a concert in London, televised, in front of 52,000 people. Beyonce, who else was there? Let me think. It was John Legend. It was Florence and the Machine, J-Lo. It was a really, really good concert. Um, it also was successful in a different way, a non-creative way, which is it raised $4 million. And that $4 million was 100% crowdfunded by Catapult to over 200 projects in 81 countries worldwide. An idea, an impact. So Catapult helps thousands of people to help millions, millions literally, of women and girls worldwide. It's, it's very cool. You should definitely check it out. Um, my last example is, is a very small hospital, and it's on the Catapult site. It's called St. Damon's. It's in Haiti. And I was fortunate enough to go to Haiti just two months ago with a camera crew and a producer to shoot um, a promotional film for St. Damien's. Um, they, the camera crew, they all donated their services. So it doesn't matter which side of the camera you're on, you can still, you know, do good, basically. Um, and in fact, you don't even need to be in the entertainment industry, as you all know. Um, St. Damien's was founded by Father Rick Fourchette, a Catholic priest who went to Haiti to open an orphanage, saw they really needed a hospital, and weekends went back to the States and requalified as a doctor. Amazing guy, absolutely amazing guy. Um, St. Damien's now is the leading a pediatric hospital in Haiti, maybe the only one actually after the earthquake, and they treat 20,000 kids basically a year for free. And there's, there's no safety net in Haiti. You're either treated or you're in trouble, basically. After the earthquake, it's 100,000 kids and mums a year now, um, but the money's running out. People have forgotten about Haiti, and so it's likely that 25,000 of those kids will be turned away this year. So go to Catapult and support them. So, so I want to wrap up a little bit. I want to say that it doesn't really matter if you're an actor, you're a camera person, you're a priest, you're a doctor, a marketing executive, or, or a music guy like me. I think if you're using your unique skills, if you, um, you start the journey and you persist, it's likely you're going to do good. Commit Media, my company, started, at, or the idea started at a funeral. And I think we've had the, the, the fortune to be able to touch thousands of lives. Um, I want to just finish with a, with a paraphrasing a quote from the Tibetan Book of the, uh, of the Dead, which says, we are all going to die. We don't know when, and now's a really good time to start learning a musical instrument. <laughs> so I hope you find your instrument and start playing. Thank you. Thanks.